you are new to my channel, my name is Anima Karimani and I make videos focused on beauty from the inside out. So this week's video is going to be on this eye look right over here. So this week's video is going to be on how to create this black smoky eye. If you guys watched my video last week, it was all about an everyday natural makeup look. But this week we're going ham and it's going to be a black smoky eye a night out party look. If you guys like what you see so far, then please don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button. Also hit that notification bell so you guys don't miss out when I put out my next video. Without any further ado, let's get started. So first I'm going to be starting off with the brows. I'm using the e.l.f. flat brow defining brush in order to fill it all in. I'm going to be starting from the top, pulling it outwards, and then doing the sides and just making it sharper. So I don't have to draw my brows from the scratch. So all I'm doing is making the edges sharper and filling in any sparse areas I have. Next, I'm going to be combing through my brows with the Anastasia Beverly Hill Clear Brow Gel. This product makes sure that my brows are held together firmly throughout the day. Next, I'm using the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer as the base for all my eyeshadow. I'm using a Morphe Flat Defining Brush in order to spread the product on my entire eye. I'm actually not going to be setting this cream with a powder because I want it to be a little sticky so the eyeshadows can stick on my eyes for longer. To start off, I'm going to be buffing this orange color onto my crease. I'm using a really fluffy brush in order to diffuse this color, pulling it inwards and then upwards. I am actually going to pull it slightly up higher because we are trying to create a gradient from light to dark and you want to make sure that there's enough light so the black doesn't take over your eye. I'm adding some more of the same colors on my brush and then buffing it out one more time to make it more opaque. I'm buffing it upwards almost into my brow bone, but make sure you don't pull it up too high because we are going to be adding a lighter shade over there. So again, as I buff, I'm also pulling it outwards because eventually we are going to be creating a wing. So keep blending until your hands hurt. So for the first round, as I said, I used the two most light brown to orange colors. Again, these colors work for my skin tone. So you wanna make sure that you're using the same brown and orange tones that work for your skin tone, whether you're darker than me or lighter than me. These are very neutral shades and work as transitions and everyone's transition colors usually differ. So make sure you're using the right transition shade for your skin tone. The next two shades I'm going to be using are towards the darker brown. I'm going to start at the bottom of the crease and buffing it out. I am putting it on my crease, but I'm not going to be bringing it up too high. Eventually, we'll start going lower and lower down the crease because we don't want to bring the dark colors up there. In order to do this, I'm using another Morphe brush. This is a duo fiber brush. It's kind of fluffy but it's more narrow and packs on the color better, which is perfect for darker shades since we're keeping it below the crease. So I'm actually going to be buffing this color out from the outwards and I'm going to be going in. So when we have a lighter color on our lids, we avoid putting darker shades closer to the, towards the inner corner. But since we're going with black for our main lid shade, you can bring it in and that's going to create a better radiant for our eye. With a denser and narrower brush, I'm going to be starting to pack on the dark browns. I'm going to again start this at the lower end of the crease and pulling it inwards and pulling it outwards. Before doing anything else, I'm actually going to be using the Anastasia Beverly Hills Prosecco Pop in order to add my brow bone highlight. I'm using this shade because it has a slight golden-ish warmth to it. And since I'm using a lot of warm tone colors like my oranges and my warm browns, it's going to match really well together. 
So one trick that I've learned is that I like to do my brow bone highlight in between my blending. Because if I've made any mistake by pulling in any of the darker shades towards my brow bone, this is going to fix the problem. And in this way, it's not going to be a harsh line because once I start blending again, it's going to merge well with all the transition shades. And now for the fun part. For our base, we are going to be using the Maybelline Gel Eyeliner in Black is Black. It's very important that you use a gel base so the matte shadows can stick on top. Remember that the matte shades are sometimes not as pigmented as they seem, so the gel base gives it something to hold on to. I'm just starting from the middle and pulling the colors towards my entire lid. So this is a very messy process. I know it looks crazy right now, but don't worry, you're eventually gonna be buffing it all out. You want to make sure that you're creating the shape for your lid and adding the darkest shade as the base. Be a little bit careful when you're working with the inner corner and the crease. You want to make sure that the black doesn't go too high in either of those areas or you're gonna look like you have raccoon eyes. Remember that you're eventually going to be buffing out darker shades in order to connect the black and the browns. You're never actually putting black all the way into your crease. So try to stay low below the crease so your black doesn't spread. Once you've buffed this out, we're going to start adding the black eyeshadow color. So the black eyeshadow that I'm using is from the same Morphe palette. I'm going to be using a really dense, small fiber brush in order to spread the black across my lid. My recommendation is you use the MAC Fix Plus or any kind of spray that has glycerin in it in order for the black to show up on your lid. So when you spray your brush, it picks up more of the pigment and it makes the black look darker and brighter. Just be careful when you're using this color because you, again, don't want to pull it up too high. Again, make sure that you're staying low or all our hard work where we blended out the different browns is going to go to waste. But don't worry, in case you do end up going a little bit higher, we are going to be blending out with darker browns once again to make sure everything is seamless. The beauty of this look is all in the blending. So keep going back and forth with the same colors that you use, but again, make sure that you're using the same colors in the same place that you did. So you don't wanna bring the browns too high either. You wanna start with the lighter shades, creams and oranges on the highest part of your lid and then slowly becoming darker and darker. As you can see, I quickly wiped off all the fallout that was underneath my eye with a makeup remover wipe and it looks a lot cleaner now. I'm just going to go back in with the denser brush and just keep blending. If you see any harsh lines, make sure you're diffusing that color so you can have that nice ombre effect. Once I finish up with my liner, I'm going to go back and add more black on the center of the lid. But again, as you can see, you want to go from light to dark very, very seamlessly. Before I continue any more blending, I'm actually going to be adding my black eyeliner. I'm using the same gel liner as I used on my lid. Since I'm using the same gel eyeliner, this process actually becomes a lot easier. I am going to be spreading the wing and pulling it inwards and connecting it to my lid. So once I've finished with my gel liner, I'm going to be taking the same Morphe Duo Fiber brush that I used for the black shadow and I'm not adding any more product, but whatever product is left, I'm going to be using that to blend the black one more time into my crease. The lashes I'm going to be using today are the Iconics from House of Lashes. They're super big and fluffy, super dramatic, so this is perfect for this eye look. I wouldn't use this particular lash for any other natural, everyday kind of makeup look, but since I'm going all black on the eye and it's supposed to be dramatic, these lashes work really well. 
Next, I'm going to be using the Maybelline Colossal Kajal in Extreme Black to line my waterline and tight line. Next, for probably the most important part of this look, again, when we're doing a smoky eye, we want to make sure that the top and the bottom are balanced. So we're gonna be repeating the same steps on the bottom. Again, it's not gonna take that long. You are going to be using the same light brown and orange shades with a small fluffy brush and adding it right underneath your eyeliner and slowly blending it out. Since we did bring these browns and oranges all the way towards the inner corner, you can do that, but as soon as we start getting towards the darker browns, you want to kind of avoid that. I'm slowly going darker, starting from the outside and pulling it inwards. And to finish this off, I'm also going to be using the black, starting from the outside and then pulling it inwards. Stay closer to your waterline and make sure you don't take away all the blending that you did with the lighter browns and oranges. I'm also going to be connecting the black with my eyeliner. With a plain brush, I'm going to be buffing out everything one more time. And that's it.